Hello! It's the end of a busy day, so please excuse my croaky voice and tiredness. But hey ho, we're on to chapter 32, 33 of the book today, and the questions from last time around asked you to um, asked you how did Michael picture Mina would appear in his dream, and I thought that she would appear with her silvery face and ink black eyes she would appear as the moon with skellig flying silently across her let's make that bigger and i asked could you explain how michael and mina patched up their friendship and i said instead of staying angry with each other they both acknowledged that they'd hated each other earlier in the day but they both wanted to be friends and i really liked that i thought that was a nice bit of teaching that came through the book right there it's okay to have these feelings about your friends as long as you're able to move past them. And a vocabulary question, what's meant by blundered? And can you act out what they might have looked like? Blundered is a verb, which means to move clumsily. And I'd sure like to see your impressions of what you'd look like moving clumsily. Okay, today, the next two chapters. What can you infer about dad chewing his lips? What can you predict about the can you predict what the news is about the baby and can you order these events coot grunts like an ape rasputin squawks and flops across his desk and rasputin tousles michael's hair let's find out okie doke 32 dr death faced me across the kitchen table he touched my hand with his long curved fingers I caught the scent of tobacco that surrounded him. I saw the black, spot, black spots on his skin. Dad was telling him the story, my disappearance in the night, my sleepwalking. I heard in his voice how scared he still was, how he thought he'd lost me. I wanted to tell him again that I was all right, everything was all right. I woke up and knew he was gone. Straight away I knew he was gone. When you love somebody you know these things. It's right, Dan, isn't it? Dr. Death tried to smile, but his eyes stayed stupid and cold. And there was this girl with you, he said. Mina, said Dad. She saw him from her window, sleepwalking in the night. She went to help him. That's true, isn't it, Michael? I nodded. Dr. Death licked his lips. Mina, she isn't one of mine, he said. I wouldn't know her. He tried to smile again. Sleepwalking, he said. He raised his eyebrows and, th and this is true? I stared at him. Yes, this is true. He watched me. <clears throat> he was cold, dry, pale as death. Wings would never rise at his back. Let me look at you. I stood in front of him. He shone tiny bright a tiny bright torch into my eyes and peered into me. He shone it into my ears. I felt his breath and his scent all over me. He lifted my shirt and pressed his stethoscope against my chest and listened to me. I felt his clammy hands on my skin. What day is it? He asked me. What month is it? What's the name of the Prime Minister? Dad chewed his lips as he watched and listened. Good lad, he murmured as I answered. Dr. Death touched my cheek. Is there anything you'd like to tell me? He asked. I shook my head. Don't be shy, he said. Me and your dad have been through everything you're going through. I shook my head again. He's a fit and healthy lad, he said. Just keep an eye on him. His mouth grinned as he looked at me and make sure he stays in bed at night. He kept me close to he, yeah, he kept me close to him. It's a difficult time, he said. Everything inside you's changing. The world can seem a wild and weird place, but you'll get through it. Did you treat Ernie? I asked. He raised his eyebrows. Ernie Myers, the man who lived here before. Ah, said Dr. Death. Yes, Mr. Myers was one of mine. Did he talk about seeing things? Things? Strange things in the garden, in the house. From the corner of my eye, I saw Dad chewing his lips again. Mr. Myers was very ill, said Dr. Death. He was dying. I know that. And, as the mind approaches death, it changes. It becomes less orderly. So he, so he did? He did speak of certain images that came to him, but so many 
of my people. So, ah, I'm stuttering, you see, at the end of the day. But so do many of my people. He held me again with his long fingers. I think you need to play football with your friends, he said. I think you need to go to school again. He looked at Dad. Yes, I think you should go to school again. Too much inside the house. He tapped my head. Too much thinking and wondering and worrying going on in there. He stood up and Dad went with him to the door. We heard them muttering together in the hallway. School for you tomorrow, said Dad as he came back in. He was trying to be all brisk and efficient, but he pressed his lips together and looked at me and I saw the scared look in his eyes. I'm sorry, Dad, I whispered. We held each other tight. Then we looked out at the wilderness. Why did you ask those things about Ernie, he said. Don't know, I said. Daft notions. It's true, what you told us, that you were sleepwalking. For a moment, I wanted to tell him everything. Skellig, the owls what Mina and I got up to at night. Then I knew how weird it would seem. Yes, I said, it's true, Dad. Chapter 33. I did go to school next day. Rasputin started his lesson by welcoming me back. He said I'd missed a lot, but he hoped I'd be able to catch up. I told him I'd been studying evolution and that I'd found out about the arche... Oh, I've had this before. Archaeopteryx. He raised his eyebrows. Do you think there are things like the Archaeopteryx in the human world? I asked him. He peered at me. Humans that are turning into creatures that can fly, I said. I heard Coot sniggering behind me. Tell him about the monkey girl, he said. What's that? said, said Rasputin. The monkey girl, said Coot. I heard Leaky telling him to shut up. Maybe there's things left over from the apes, said Coot. Monkey girls and monkey boys. I ignored him. Our bones would need to become pneumatised, I said. Rasputin came to me and tousled my hair. Tousled, that means roughed it up a bit. Wings might help as well, he said. But I can see you've been reading widely. Well done, Michael. And stop interrupting, Coot. We all know who the monkey boy is here. Coot giggled. He grunted like an ape and Rasputin turned and went back to the front. He said we were past evolution now. We'd moved on to studying our own insides, the muscles, the heart and lungs, the digestive system, the nervous system, the brain. Keep coming to school, Michael, he said. You don't want to miss anything more. No, sir, I said. He unrolled a long poster of cutaway man. Bright red lungs and heart exposed in his chest, stomach and intestines. Networks of blood vessels and nerves, maroon muscles and white bones, blue-grey brain. He, stare, he stared out at us through cavernous eyes. A few of the others shuddered in disgust. This is you, said Rasputin. Coot giggled. Rasputin called him to the front. He acted out stripping Coot's skin away, tearing open his chest. <laughs> yes, he said. Inside we're all the same, no matter how horrible the outside may seem to be. This is what we would see were we to open up our Mr Coot, he smiled. Of course, there may be a little more mess than appears in the picture. Coot scuttled back to his desk. Now, said Rasputin, I'd like you to place your hand on the left side of your chest like this. Feel the beating of your heart. We felt our hearts. I knew how stupid it would be to tell Rasputin that I could feel two hearts, the baby's and my own. This is our engine, said Rasputin, beating day and night, when we're awake and when we're sleeping. We don't have to think about it. Mostly we're hardly aware that it's even there. But if it stopped... Coot squawked, as if he'd been strangled. Correct, Mr Coot. Rasputin squawked too and flopped across his desk. I looked around. Half the class lay sprawled across their desks, pretending to be dead. Leaky was watching me. I could tell he wanted to be friends again. In the yard at lunchtime I played football as hard as I could. I did sliding tackles and diving headers. I dribbled and dummied and went for wild overhead kicks. I scored four goals, made three more and my team won by miles. At the end, there was a long rip down the side of my jeans. The knuckles of my left hand were scratched and scraped. There was blood trickling from a little cut over my eye. The lads on my team surrounded me as we headed back inside. They said it was the best I'd ever played. 
They told me I should stop staying off. They needed me. Don't worry, said Leaky. He's really back this time, aren't you, Michael? We had Miss Clark's in the afternoon. I wrote a story about a boy exploring <clears throat> some abandoned warehouses by the river. He finds an old stinking tramp who turns out to have wings growing under his ancient coat. The boy feeds the man with sandwiches and chocolate and the man becomes strong again. The boy has a friend called Kara. The man teaches the boy and Kara how it feels to fly and then he disappears, flapping away across the water. I saw tears in Miss Clark's eyes as she sat behind me, sorry, beside me reading the story. It's lovely, Michael, she said. Your style is really coming on. You've been practising at home. I nodded. Good, she said. You have a true gift. Look after it. It was just after this that the secretary, Mrs Moore, came in and whispered something to Miss Clarks. They both looked at me. Mrs Moore asked me to go with her for a moment. I was trembling as I went to her. I put my hand on my chest and felt my heart. She led me through the long corridors towards the office. My dad was on the phone, she said. He wanted a word with me. I chewed my lips as I lifted the handset. I heard him breathing, sighing. It's the baby, I said. Yes, something's not right. I need to go in to sort things out. Something? A lot of things, son. They want to talk to me and your mum together. Not me. I talked to mum, to Mina's mum. You can have tea there. You can wait there till I come home. I'll not be long. You'll hardly know I've been away. Will the baby be all right? They think so. They hope so. Anyway, nothing will happen tonight. It's tomorrow they'll be doing it. I should have stayed at home. I should have kept thinking about her. I'll give her a kiss from you. And mum. And mum. You're very brave, Michael. No, I'm not. I thought as I felt myself trembling. No, I'm blinking not. <laughs>